The M1A2 Abrams is America's most advanced armored fighting vehicle. This 70-ton heavy metal monster combines devastating firepower with superb armor protection. A combination which makes this main battle tank virtually unstoppable in combat. The M1A2's chum armor is composed of layered steel and ceramic blocks bound by a polyurethane foam. An additional layer of depleted uranium mesh combined with the Abrams low sloping angular shape further protects critical areas. A 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine gives the Abrams a maximum road speed in excess of 45 miles per hour and a cross country speed averaging more than 30 miles per hour. Although its fuel consumption is greater than one gallon per mile, the engine can run on anything from diesel to jet fuel. The Intervehicular Information System, or IVIS, enables the M1A2 to communicate with other battlefield units without the use of a voice radio channel. The IVIS displays the location of friendly and known enemy forces and allows the tank commander to report new threats as well as request artillery and air support. The CITV, or Commander's Independent Thermal Viewer, is an all-weather, 360-degree target surveillance system, which enables the tank commander to view the battlefield and target the main gun. This allows the tank commander to scan for new threats while the gunner destroys the current target. The M1A2's main gun is the M256 120mm smoothbore cannon. Firing ammunition ranging from Sabot to Impats, this cannon can consistently score first round kills out to a range of 4,000 meters. Accurate, hard hitting firepower, enhanced crew survivability, and sophisticated fire control systems and sensors make the M1A2 Abrams the most effective armored fighting vehicle on the modern battlefield. The M1A2 carries a crew of four, the tank commander or TC, the gunner, the loader, and the driver. The tank commander sits above and behind the gunner. This station is the information center of the Abrams and features two of the most prominent enhancements of the M1A2. The commander's independent thermal viewer, or CITV, allows the commander to search for targets and threats independently of the tank or turret facing. Using it, the commander can identify targets and hand them off to the gunner, giving the M1A2 true hunter-killer capability. As its name implies, the CITV features a thermal imaging system allowing the TC to detect targets under low light conditions. Magnification can be set to either 3 power or 10 power. The Intervehicular Information System, or IVIS, digitally connects the M1A2 with other units in a battlefield network. The position of both friendly and enemy units is automatically communicated between tanks without the use of voice radio. The IVIS provides an unprecedented degree of coordination and situational awareness. The gunner sits in front of and below the tank commander within the turret basket. The gunner's cockpit features all the controls necessary to target and shoot. The gunner's primary sight or GPS is the primary device used to target and fire both the main gun and the coaxial machine gun. It features 3 power and 10 power magnification, as well as thermal imaging with reverse polarity and image stabilization. Using the GPS, a gunner can find a target and range it using a laser rangefinder. The distance of the target is then displayed in the GPS. When the round is loaded and ready to fire, the gunner can pull the trigger, send it on its way with distance and lead automatically taken into account. The gunner's auxiliary sight, or gas, is a backup device for aiming the main gun and coax. The gas is fixed and bore sighted along the main gun. Because it lacks the stabilization and laser rangefinder offered by the GPS, the gunner must manually lead the target and elevate the gun. The loader's position is to the tank commander's left, on the other side of the main gun breech. It is the loader's job to move the 120mm rounds from ammunition storage racks and load them into the chamber for firing. The ready ammunition compartment is the primary storage rack and is located behind a heavy blast door that the loader opens with a knee switch. When the requested round has been loaded and locked into the breech block, the loader yells, UP! The driver sits in the hull of the M1A2 with a narrow view of the outside world through vision blocks in the driver's hatch. From this vantage point, the driver maneuvers the tank through various terrain using handlebar shaped steer throttle control. The driver's display and other gauges keep the driver informed about the tank's speed and orientation, as well as the critical conditions of the engine and other systems. No tank on the modern battlefield is a match for the destructive firepower of the Abrams. 
An assortment of munitions can be fired through the M1A2's 120mm smoothbore main gun. The M829 Armor Piercing Fin Stabilized Discarding Sabre is a kinetic energy armor defeating round. It consists of a six bladed aluminum fin and a depleted uranium long rod penetrator with a ballistic tip to reduce drag. The long rod penetrator is 24 inches long and has a diameter of less than three inches. A breakaway shell or sabo adds to the round's diameter, allowing it to be fired through the 120 millimeter tube. Once clear of the muzzle, the sabo pedals fall free and the long rod penetrator continues to its target at six times the speed of sound. It relies solely on its speed and density to penetrate the target's armor. The entire force of the impact is concentrated on a surface area of less than a couple of inches. This intense pressure creates enough heat to melt the armor in front of it. It is the molten armor which follows the projectile into the target that does most of the actual damage. The M830 High Explosive Anti-Tank or Heat Round is a chemical energy multi-purpose projectile with an anti-personnel capability. The heavy 53 pound round consists of a fin stabilized steel body which contains the explosive. The fins are canted and make the projectile spin. A copper shape charge liner and wave shaper are contained within the warhead. The projectile has a steel spike with a nose cap and shoulder switches for full frontal area functioning. An electrically initiated base detonated fuse is located in the rear of the body. The round gets an extra push through the air by a perforated stick propellant. When a heat round strikes the target, the standoff spike impacts first. This detonates the shape charge, with the force of the round blasting straight forward into the target. Fine fragments of the target material, or spall, serve as anti-personnel elements. Unlike the Sable, the heat round does not depend on speed for its effectiveness. As long as it strikes the target, it will explode, making the heat round as deadly at 3,000 meters as it is at close range. The heat round does not have as flat a trajectory, as quick a flight time, or as small a surface area as a sabo, and therefore may be less accurate. While a heat round leaves the muzzle at speeds over 6,400 feet per second, its weight and blunt shape cause it to lose that speed quickly. The MPAT, or multi-purpose anti-tank round, is a variant of the heat round. With a shape charge warhead similar to the heat, the MPAT features greater fragmentation effect. It has a dual mode air ground switch, which is set at the time of loading. In ground mode, it uses a standard impact fuse and is effective against tanks and other vehicles, as well as infantry and fortifications. In air mode, it is proximity detonated and can be used against helicopters. The smart, target activated, fire and forget or staff round searches out and destroys enemy armor at distances beyond the reach of conventional munitions. A top attack smart munition, the staff destroys enemy armor by flying overhead, firing down at its target with an explosively formed penetrator warhead. This allows it to be effective against targets which are partially or even fully masked by terrain. A major advantage of the staff round is that once it's fired, the tank crew can move their attention to other targets, as the staff's electronic brain and target seeker work autonomously. Because it is tolerant of aiming errors, this round is tremendously effective against targets taking evasive action. A 7.62 mm M240 machine gun is mounted next to the main gun. Referred to as the coax, this gun shoots wherever the main gun is pointed. Another 7.62 mm machine gun may be optionally mounted at the loader's hatch. A 50 caliber Browning M2 machine gun is mounted at the commander's station. In the unbuttoned position, the TC can use this gun for anti-aircraft defense. All of the machine guns may be used to suppress or destroy thin-skinned targets, such as APCs, trucks, and Jeeps. Concealment is a primary key to survival in tank combat. In addition to vehicle camouflage, issues such as terrain masking, defilade, and direction of approach can be the difference between victory and defeat. Tankers are always aware of the terrain around them. You do not want to skyline yourself on top of a ridge, making yourself a highly visible target to the enemy and much easier to kill. Therefore, tank platoons generally follow a course which provides for good concealment behind terrain or trees. Staying on the roads may reduce the amount of dust kicked up by your vehicle, but be aware of mines. Defilade refers to the tank being masked behind terrain. 
A tank in hull down or partial defilade position only has its turret visible to the enemy. This helps to hide the tank and presents a smaller target with only the strongest armor exposed. In full defilade, your tank is turret down and completely hidden by the terrain. It cannot be seen, but it also cannot see very well. Ideally, the tank commander will be able to see out and observe the area while the tank remains hidden. Full defilades are used for hiding your force until the enemy has reached a vulnerable position. Background masking is another factor which tank crews must consider when approaching targets for attack as well as selecting defilade. An exposed tank is much more visible with a background of clear sky than one with terrain or trees behind it. When possible, always maintain a background which causes your tank to be lost in the clutter from the enemy's point of view. Dismissed!